Now, Tommy, Bjubnuk Ray, so you're very welcome to the first, um, the, the, the concert of the festival concert of the McKenna weekend. Uh, loads going on this weekend. There's brochures around if you want to know more. But right now, I'd like to welcome the, the Bogues and Sean Gilrain. for me. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome to Drum Kieran Town. And uh, I, I was asked to say a few words here tonight by the committee. And uh, I'm honored to say a few words here tonight because Fergus Bogue is launching his solo CD here tonight. And uh, he's accompanied by Amy McNamara and Amy's uh, brother, Garoge McNamara, from Tulla County Clare. <laughs> and also we have Jerry McMahon from Listnesky County Fermanagh. <laughs> so, Fergus, it really is a great honour for me, Fergus, to say a few words here now. And I mean that. This, this isn't public house talk now, Fergus. <laughs> Because, Fergus, I know you since you were about 13 years old. And you're a mighty musician, Fergus. And to, to, to put the tin hat on it, to put the tin hat on it, Fergus, you have a mighty personality to go with it. <laughs> so, Fergus, with those two attributes, I think everything else will take care of itself. <laughs> now, the CD, I have to put on these headlamps. The CD, it's a fantastic piece of work. And it's called Jirok, Jirok Own Cree, which means straight from the heart. And you couldn't have a better title to describe Fergus Bogue's music because every note he plays, he plays it with soul and passion. A lot of people just put notes together and they're making music all right, but there's nothing, there's no, there's nothing, it's not coming from the heart. That's not the case with Fergus Bogue. And the CD itself, there's some fantastic tunes on it. I see, Fergus, that you have the great Lad O'Byrne represented here. You have Lad O'Byrne represented in Lad O'Byrne's reel and also in Lad O'Byrne's hornpipe. Well, Fergus, if anybody deserved to have their name on a tune title, it's Lad O'Byrne, because he was a genius. His name was... Lad O'Byrne's real name was James O'Byrne. He was from Ballinalak, Bunanadan, County Sligo. He was born in 1911 in Bunanadan. He immigrated to America in 1928, and he died there in 1980. And Fergus, the man was a genius. He was, some people put him on a level playing field with the great Michael Coleman as a fiddle player. But he never recorded commercially. And the reason he didn't record commercially was he didn't want to be mentioned in the same sentence as Michael Coleman. He had so much respect for Coleman. And Lad O'Byrne was... Uh, I, there was a, a great friend of Lad O'Byrne's called Vincent Harrison, and we all knew Vincent very well. Vincent told me a great story about Lad O'Byrne. They, they were in the Bronx one night, and they were listening to a record of Coleman's. And Coleman was doing all this intricate stuff on the fiddle and they couldn't figure out what he was doing. So there was no setting on the gramophone record to slow it down so they could figure out what the hell Coleman was at. So uh, Vincent, Har Vincent Harrison says, what are we going to do about this lad? He said to Lad O'Byrne. And Lad says, he says, I have a plan. Do you know what Lad did? He slowed down the electricity coming into the gramophone. <laughs> That's a fact. And then they were able to figure out what the hell Coleman was doing. So you have, the fact that you have Lad O'Byrne represented here, Fergus, is, is fantastic. Also, Fergus, you have George White's reel on here. George White was a piccolo player from Long County Longford who ran a bar in New York City, but he didn't compose the tune. The tune was actually composed by John McGrath. He was a fiddle player from Rossport in Northwest Mayo, and he composed the tune. But it, it became known as George White's because he was associated with the tune. Also, Fergus, you have the new found out reel on here, Fergus. The new found out reel is a reel that comes from, uh, the title comes from out the road here in Crevelay. A few miles out the road here, Fergus. Because there was a great fiddle player, he's no longer with us, Seamus Horden, from Tawny Lee, out the road here. 
And Seamus Horden's father was a great single row melodeon player, the ten single row ten buttons. And he was in America. And when Seamus' father came back from America, he brought back a load of tunes with him. And those tunes were uh, uh, knitted into the local repertoire here. And one of the tunes was the new found out, because it was a new found out reel. Nobody had heard it until Seamus Horden's father came back from America. So that how, that's how it got its title, The New Found Out. So I'm <laughs> delighted, Fergus. You have the right title and all on her, The New Found Out. <laughs> you have Joe Cooley represented here, Fergus. The Queen of the Fair and the Humours of Innes Diamond. Also, you have uh, the Sailor's Bonnet represented here. The Sailor's Bonnet was made famous by another man who was born very close to this spot. The great John McKenna, the flute player, born in 1880. He recorded the Sailor's Bonnet in September 1928. And before McKenna recorded the Sailor's Bonnet, there was no audio or manuscript uh, form of that tune. McKenna was the one who introduced it into the mainstream repertoire. Coleman recorded it in 1934. You know the famous set, the Tar Bolton set? Yeah. The Tar Bolton, the Longford Collector and the Sailor's Bonnet. And everybody gave Coleman the credit for popularising the Sailor's Bonnet. But I'm afraid John McKenna beat him to it six years previous to that, uh -huh. in 1928. <laughs> now, Fergus. Also, Fergus. You have two, you have, you have some great waltzes on this. You have the beautiful goldfinch. The beautiful goldfinch composed by the great Marcus Hernan from Carna in South Connemara. Flute player. Uh, one of the great flute players, Marcus Hernan. <laughs> and Marcus composed a bucket load of tunes. And he called every single tune after a bird. And this is one of them, the beautiful goldfinch. The invisible corncrake is another one. He brought out a whole CD of all his compositions, and they're all called after different, for different types of birds. And uh, I says to Marcus, we had him in Ballinaglera there a couple of years ago, and I says, why did you call all your tunes after birds, Marcus? And he says, well, he says, for years and years, he says, people thought that I was away with the birds. <laughs> so, I, so I decided I'd add a bit of fuel to the fire. So I composed, so that's why he done it, that's why he done it. And... Fergus, lastly, you have some great new compositions on here as well to blend in with all the great old stuff. You have The Road to Garrison, and, of course, that's Morris Lennon's composition, yeah. and Brian Rooney brought out the great album, The Godfather, yeah. and he put the wrong title on it. It should have been The Road to Garrison, because <laughs> that's the right, that's the, you have the right title on here anyway, Fergus. <laughs> and also, you have another Morris Lennon composition on here, The, the Stone of Destiny. Mm. And then last but by no means least, the last tune on the album is The Wish A Hick and Drive Reel. It's a fantastic Liz Carroll composition. So, Fergus and Jerry and Amy and Goroj, it's a privilege here tonight to declare your Fergus Bugs solo CD, Girock on Gree, meaning straight from the heart. I'd like to hereby declare it here in Drumkeerden Town, officially launched. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the night. We'll tell you a few tunes to start off, so hope you enjoyed them. And if anyone wants to dance or let us shout or anything, you're more than welcome. <laughs>
Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, you probably all know I'm not a great man for talking. But, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was three reels. And um, the first one was Old Garrison. You heard Sean Gilrain gave you an introduction to all the tunes there <laughs> on you. And Sean's a great friend. And you, we couldn't have had a better lad launching the CD tonight. So delighted that Sean done it. And we went in to tune The Stone of Destiny. And the last one was actually a different tune. It was Jim Donahoe's there. So. We had a few launches, and I'll be honest, the tunes are changing every night, but <laughs> we're, we're really enjoying it anyway, so I hope you enjoy the night, and like, we're all here for a bit of crack in that, so if anyone wants to dance or, or shout or, or, or do whatever you want, you're more than welcome, and there's lots of fa friends there in the audience and storytellers and everything, so be ready, because we might be calling on you to do, to do a couple of funny stories first. So... I suppose um, Grode said Jerry McMahon, Grode McNamara, and Amy McNamara on the fiddle there. So my sister was actually on the on the CD, but she's away tonight there. So we have Amy McNamara up from Tulla. So give her a big round of applause there. <laughs> we do a set of jigs now, Amy. I don't, I don't think you ever heard of the first one. It's called the Claire Shout. And, and, and uh, we're going to go into a real day, or a jig then, sorry, I learned from Oliver Divney. It's a version of Pudgeon or Aphrodite. And we're going to finish off with a tune called Inish Barakon that was composed by Johnny O'Connolly, a great accordion player from, from the Gale Talked area there. So we'll give, them a, we'll give them a rattle anyway. So thank you very much. <laughs>
Thanks very much now. Do you think Jerry McMahon's making a good job of that guitar? <laughs> <laughs> we give him a big round of applause. Oh, okay. There were three. I'd, I'd want to do it because it pays for your good, you know. Away, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, Jerry. We'll, we'll, um, we'll do a set of reels. Oh, we might do something different after that now. So we'll try a set of reels there. We put these sets together about. Five minutes before we came on, so so we'll see if they're all right. But we'll do a set there. It's um, we'll do the coal miner into a tune called the Mason's Apron. Well, it's a it's a Michael Russell version of the Mason's Apron. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll finish off with a tune there. You might have heard me play the Mill House there. So we'll give it a go on it.
think Fergus has a turbocharger going at the minute. <laughs> 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 or else it's a, it's a straight six cylinder engine, I think. Some of the two. <laughs> well, He's a mighty form of playing. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not the main act from Cavan here tonight because we brought a secret weapon with us. And this man, he's going to come up and do something different now. It's Eamon Maguire, and he's going to tell a story. <laughs> so we get Eamon up there. <laughs> this is the secret weapon coming up now, so... And, and I hope you're not easily offended. <laughs> well, I want to thank Fergus and uh, his group here for uh, giving me the chance to do a story, so... I think I'll start with this one. It's about the driving test. <laughs> ah, someday next week will be me birthday. Will I be 65 or will I be 64? <laughs> Devil a bit of me knows. Anyway, I'm not as simple as I used to be before. All me life, I rode down bike. I journeyed on it near and far. But six months ago, I took the plunge and bought a motor car. Now, when the motor was delivered and with me money I had parted, sure it was only then I realised the expense had only started. Indeed, driving lessons cost a fortune for a test to have to pass and 300 euros for a little disc to stick up on the glass. Yeah, sure, the insurance was a nightmare. Sure, it nearly left me broke. Yeah, sure, there was times when I regretted that I ever bought the bloody yoke. And then there came this letter about the NCT. I'm glad that they were talking about that motor and not about me. <laughs> now, testing that motor... That's all very well. But should have I had to undergo a test like that? Nah, sure I wouldn't stand a chance in hell. Nah, no. Nah, sure the old chassis is getting rusty. The suspensions is getting creaky. The lamps are out of focus. And the water hose is leaking. <laughs> now, after several weeks of lessons, I was ready for me test. So I headed on down towards the centre, dressed up in me son the best. Your man sat in beside me with a book upon his lap. And, you know, he looked at me a kind of funny when I wiped the window with me cap. <laughs> oh, says he, we'll travel that way, and then we'll take a right, and then, says he, we'll take a left beyond the traffic lights. Ah, sure, I pushed out gear, stick into fourth gear, and then I let out the clutch. Sure, I looked over at your man, and sure, he was sitting with a hump on him like a rabbit in a hutch. <laughs> Everything was going grand. I was going like a bomb, till an old lassie on a bicycle around the corner chance to come. <laughs> ah, sure, I stabbed me foot down on the brake to avoid a head-on smash, and your man was tangled in the harness with his nose against the dash. <laughs> How oh, should the engine stall on me and refuse point blank to start, despite all the costs and blessings I was ready to impart? Anyway, I got her going. Go out of town, says he. So I turned her around and I headed her for the open country. Now, everything went wrong that could possibly go wrong, and I began to think your man was sorry that he had come along. <laughs> for when I backed into a gate post, he turned a sort of a yeller. Do you know, between me and you, I think he was a very nervous type of fella. <laughs> For he had reneged upon the biro and taken to the beads. And I was coming down the motorway with the old engine fairly buzzing. And your man was knocking off Hail Mary's at 16 to the dozen. <laughs> ah, sure, I knew I made an odd mistake, but I did me very best. So I thought I'd ask that all-important question. Have I passed me test? <laughs> now, nah, sure, he looked at me straight in the eye with a watery sort of a grin. Oh, you have, says he, but I'll not go through an ordeal like that again. 
So I got me driving license and I headed home once more. And I parked my little motor proudly outside the door. Now I was fully licensed, I could uh, drive whenever I like. And I never more would throw me leg across that old rally bike. I'd load up all the neighbours on a Sunday going to Mass. And the old ones on the bicycles would stand in to let me pass. <laughs> I seem to be very popular now, no matter where I go. I should, I should have had a motor car 20 years ago. I went into town a few weeks back to see the cattle train and went to have a pint and somehow overstayed. And as I made me journey home, I swerved to miss a dog and I lost control of me little motor and submerged her in the bog. <laughs> ah, me motor days are over now and I'm back on the old bike again. And when I think of all the money I spent, sure, it almost seems a sin. But there's one thing you can be rest assured, that the next car I go off in, the undertaker will be driving, and I'll be in the coffin. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> we'll have more to come now. We, we'll have more to come a bit later on now. We're going to try three jigs there. Um, the first one's called The Rose and the Heather. A great tune there. And we're going to go into a tune. It's called The Bowl Teddy Quill. And it's a song as well. Some of you might recognise the song. And we're going to finish off with a tune then. And I haven't a clue what the name it is, so... Maybe if Sean Gilrain's there, he might tell me the, the name afterwards there. <laughs> <laughs> so we give them a go.
do a tune this time. It's um, it's a slow air there, and I'll give it a go now. So I'll try not to put you to sleep there, but it's, it's Limerick Lament, and there's a man in the audience who knows this slow air very well, and that's Dinny Leonard there. So, yeah. di so di Dinny's a great lad there, and we're going to try this slow air, and Dinny, maybe you'll come up for a few tunes afterwards if you have the fiddle there, so you can be getting prepared there. But anyway, I'll give this, I'll give this a go here. And we'll do a few lively tunes afterwards then and try and wake you up again. <laughs> <laughs>
we're going to try three tunes here and I suppose this will be our last set of the first half but there's going to be one act after us and I'll introduce him after here and he's after this set and he's going to tell a story we'll all get a cup of tea then and we'll be back on later on there but we're going to finish with this set for us to finish to finish off there this first half the first tune is called um, the clavel reel there so we learned it kind of from the Shandrum Cayley band there great tune and a great Cayley band there and we're going to go into a tune there the rookery so it's a common one around Clare there and we're going to finish off with a tune you all might have heard with finish the first half it's called the books of our more <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll give it a go there <laughs>
that's us for the first half. But before we go, we have another storyteller. They're an awful nuisance, aren't they? <laughs> and, and this man, worse again, he's a Roscommon man. He's a Rossi. And I'd, I'd like to invite up to the stage Pat McGarry there for a story there. So hopefully you enjoy him now. There was this fella, Johnny was his name, and Johnny was what you'd call a bachelor farmer. Poor Johnny was very ignorant in his way and brutal in his language. Johnny had a thatched house, a bit of land and a few cattle. And why Johnny never married was, he was too shy when he was young and he was too old when he got the courage. There was this lady, a neighbor of Johnny's, and she spent years in America. And when she retired and the dollars made, she came to Ireland with plenty of money and a big trunk of stuff. She wasn't married either. She was like a lot of women. She spent a lot of her time wondering who she'd marry, but now we came to the time that she was wondering who'd marry her. But she wasn't long married until she ran in, she wasn't long home until she ran into Johnny the farmer, and in no time at all, the two of them got married. Well, they say one trouble never comes alone. They wasn't long married until the station mass was called to the, wife, the house, but the wife was delighted, because it gave her a great chance to show off the things she brought in the big trunk from America. She had bedclothes, she had delf, she had a butter cooler with a roof on it, she had a tongs from the lump sugar and a tea cosy for the teapot. Some of the things that poor Johnny never saw before in his life. This day Johnny was out in the field working and the wife was at home at the house. She had the tea cosy on the teapot. And on the tea cosy there was a big embroidered cock. So when Johnny comes in and sees your man on the table, he made for the twig and he made bits of the teapot. Well, the two of them got to work on the house for the station mass. She done the painting and the papering inside, and he done the thatching and the whitewashing outside. And in no time at all did the little house lovely. Now, coming near the day of the station mass, the only thing that was worrying the wife was the husband's manner, because he was thick. And she didn't want to be disgraced in front of the neighbours and the parish priest. So she thought to herself that a bit of schooling wouldn't do him any harm. So this evening when the jobs was done, she called Johnny aside. Now, Johnny, she says, you've been the man of the house the morning of the station mass. You'll have to have your breakfast in the room with the priest. And I don't want you saying things for an the priest like, excuse me, father, the butter is a bit hairy because the cat and the dog does be sleeping in the dairy. And for God's sake, don't be pouring the tea out of your cup and, 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 and blowing it to cool it as you always are. And make sure when you're talking to the priest that you take the spoon out of your cup. And another thing, she says, you've been the man of the house the morning of the station mass, you'll have to go down to the wicker gate to welcome the priest and carry up his case, as was the custom. And when you go down to the wicker gate, you put out your hand like that, and you say, good morning, dear father, fall already. We won't feel it now until Christmas. Well, Johnny didn't want to say fall already because he never heard it said before, but the wife made him say it. Said that that was the time in America they called the fall that we call the harvest time here. Well, Johnny used to dread the sun going down every evening because it meant that he'd have to have a rehearsal. And when he'd be out in the field working, he'd be putting a good morning to your father. Fall already. We won't feel it now until Christmas. Well, the night before the station mass, Johnny was sent on his last excursion down to the wicked gate, the same as if the priest was there. The wife waited above at the house watching. Johnny marches down to the wicker gate, puts out his hand the same as if the priest was there. Good morning, dear father. Fall already. We won't feel it now until Christmas. Well, the last thing the two of them done before the winter bed, they got bucket after bucket of water and they threw it on the cement path down to the wicker gate to have it nice and clean for the priest in the morning and then the winter bed. And with the tiredness and the excitement, it took them a long time to sleep. And when they slept, it took them a long time to waken. She was first up in the morning. The first thing she done was to go to the window, pull back the curtains to see what sort of a morning it was. And who did she see below at the wicker gate looking up at the house? Only the parish priest waiting for someone to meet him, as was the custom. Well, she called Johnny. Well, Johnny never got out of the bed as quick in all his life. And like every man that had been in a hurry, he was putting two legs into one leg of the trouser. The collar of the shirt was getting caught. And of course, the wife was shouting at him. So on the long run, when he got the hardness on him, he made a run out the door. But what he didn't know was there was a heavy fall of frost the night before. So when Johnny went on the runway to the wicker gate, the two legs went from under him, 
and he went skiing on his arse down to the wicker gate. And when he got up, he put out his hand to the priest and he says, Good Father, dear morning, have a pain in me arse from the fall and I'll feel it now until Christmas. Shin shin. We'll all get a cup of tea. Thank you very much. Second part of the, the concert. Um, and now, before we revert to the wonderful music of Fergus Bogue and friends, um, the next two people coming on stage are people, I suppose they epitomise uh, what makes the McKenna special over the last 20 years. We've made friends. I think I've been involved with this festival for nearly 20 years. And every now and again, you meet these wonderful people who arrive uh, and they become friends of the McKenna Festival. Um, Fiona and Jim Byrne are incredibly talented, brilliant singers. They're a great duet, a great couple, and uh, they are a core part of the festival. And after tonight, now they're going to sing here maybe for a short while, um, they'll also be singing tomorrow um, as part of the singing Leitrim Singing Circle session in Devitz from around 4 or 5 p.m., so would you welcome on stage two amazing, lovely people, great musicians, um, Fiona and Jim Byrne. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, everyone else. I hardly recognise myself there. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to be back um, in Jumkeer. And we've, I think this is our third year now, and every time we come back, we feel like we're meeting all our own old friends and making some new ones, and it's, it's just lovely to be here. So thank you for having us again. I'm try I was trying hard to remember what songs we sang last time so that we're not boring you, but sure. You'll just know the choruses better uh, this time round. I am, uh, if you haven't met us before, we live in Donegal, um, but obviously I'm not from Donegal, I'm Scottish. Um, Jim's from Belfast, but we moved to Donegal about 10 or 12 years ago and just kind of fell into the madness there. Met lots of good friends there, so... So I sing a mixture of Scottish and Irish stuff, as does Jim, so uh, I'll start with a Scottish number that Jim is sick of hearing, but uh, it's one of the ones that I find easier to sing, so it gets me going. It's got a chorus, so you've been sitting there listening to the fantastic music of Fergus and the guys, um, but maybe it's time for a song. So if you feel like singing along, um, the chorus to this is, I walk and oh, um, walking not as in walking, walking is... Uh, in old Scots means awake, awaking, yeah, so it's the same. I walk and oh, I'm always awake, walking I and weary, sleep I can get nain for thinking of me deary. So please join in if you fancy it.
We're so decisive. We're still having to decide what else we're going to sing. Um, Go for that. Okay. Please. I have been um, B flat. Um, you'll know this song, and I'm ashamed even to sing it here. Um, it's, a, it's an Irish song called Ned of the Hill. You'll, I'm sure you know it. Um, I have never sang it before in public, I don't think. So, um, so go easy on me. I probably forget the words. But um, so if I get stuck, sing out and help me. But it's a beautiful song that just absolutely gorgeous. It's Ned of the Hill. And 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could I try one myself? Um, I have never seen Fiona on a stage before with a cup of tea in her hand. <laughs> it's always a pint. <laughs> I've never seen me on a stage with a cup of tea. That's not a cup of tea, that's a lamb sip. No, I just I had the <laughs> lamb sip before I came up. <laughs> Dying of the cold for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> to take a photo. <laughs> My mother no, will don't. never believe it. <laughs> no, I don't want to see any photographs of that on Facebook. Or <laughs> um, just, just to cheer you up, this is a a song I've been doing for years and years and years about uh, about a highwayman who gets hanged. <laughs> really cheerful story. Brought the gold home to me heart's delight. To Covent Garden I did stray with my fair lady far to see the play. Lord Colding's men they did me burst you, and I was taken. Well, I was taken by the cursed crew. My father cried, oh my darling son My wife she wept and cried, I am undone My mother tore her white locks and cried Sin in the cradle, sin in the cradle He should have died And when I'm dead and in my grave A flashy funeral, pray let me have with six bold highwaymen to carry me. Give them good broadswords, give them good broadswords and sweet liberty. Six pretty fair maids to bear my pall. Give them white ribbons and white garlands all. And when I'm dead, they will speak the truth. He was a wild and he was a wild and a wicked youth. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
We really must write things down. I don't remember them. We're, uh, we're just going to sing one more song and then um, we'll hand back to, to Fergus and the, the lads in Lassie. Um, who were fantastic. It was so lovely to, to see them on stage. So, such life in their play and it's fantastic. Um, so they'll cheer you up after I totally depressed you with this one. Um, it's even happier than a song about a highwayman who kills himself. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a love song, a Scottish love song. Um, the Broom of the Cowed Nows. It's another one with a chorus if you fancy singing along that's... Um, easy enough to pick up but uh, yeah a man singing about a, a lady he loves the best kind of song Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and we'll see you over the weekend. Thank you. for a few reasons. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you very much. Um, uh, beautiful singing there before we come on there. Jesus, it was brilliant. Now, um, there were three reels there. The first one was Eminem, a, a composition by by um, Morris Lennon, I think, and Brian Rooney would be a very common player of that tune there, and he does a far better job than us at it. But um, we went into <laughs> We went into a tune then, Larkin's Beehive afterwards, and we finished off with a popular tune there. You might hear Oliver Divney and some of them playing. It's called Anderson's Reel now. And um, before, before we go on, we're going to do a set here, but before we go on, um, i just, first of all, like to thank the committee for bringing us out here um, this evening, and it's brilliant to be here. And um, thanks very much to, to everyone who supported the CD there. And the proceeds of the CD are going to charity there. So me, Amy, and Grode, we left Jerry Pind here in <laughs> Ireland, but we went on, on a bit of a trip there to... Wasn't fit for <laughs> we went on a bit of a trip there to South Africa, a fairly quiet trip anyway, but um, we were playing a few music gigs and we visited an orphanage and uh, it, it, there was great work going on there with young children and that. So we're going to donate the money for the CD towards the orphanage there. So thank you all. <laughs> Th th thank you all very much. Thank you all very much for supporting it there. And um, there was a lady in the audience there, and she asked me, would, would, she, would I play a couple of barn dances into a, a couple of reels there? And um, I said, ah, sure. We're, we're stuck for sets here anyway. And I said, geez, that'd be another one to do there. So we'll do that, them couple of barn dances, and maybe we'll get my father, Seamus Bogue, up on the mouth organs there. <laughs> So maybe Daddy would come up on the mouth organs, and if Mammy brought the bower on with her, she <laughs> might come up as well there. <laughs> anyway, Dad, Daddy will be up. He doesn't have to be asked twice anyway there. <laughs> so we'll give these a go there. This is especially for this lady here in the second row there. Thanks very much. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed them.
Actually, while he's here, I'm going to tell you a funny story about this man, and he doesn't even know the story himself yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, there was um, one day, anyway, we growed up for the weekend, and we had him in, stuck in the middle of a session, anyway. And I was wedged one side of him, and Daddy was wedged the other side of him, and my sister was in front, front of him, and there was a big tight session there. There wasn't much... There wasn't much room to move in it now, to be fair. But um, anyway, we were after doing a big long set anyway, and the sweat was dripping from us all. And geez, we were dying at the thirst. And anyway, Daddy got the orders. Would you go and get us a my wadi there and bring it down? So anyway, you, you don't even know this one yourself. But uh, anyway, he, he, went up, he went up to the bar anyway, and he was in the middle of getting the my wadis. And the next, the next thing, the next thing, there was a set started in the session. It was one of his favourite tunes. And anyway, when he heard it starting, the ears packed up on him. Anyway, he was looking about, and he seen the mouth organs in the middle of the session, and he just thought, I have to get in there and start playing. So he he came he came down straight to a set, through the session, 
And I don't know, with the people that close, I don't even know how he got through them, but he was that determined to get playing this tune anyway. <laughs> but but, but didn't, didn't he get in there anyway? He got in there and his seat was wedged against the road and he hit the piano, piano a bit of a dunt. And then he spilled the whole my waddy all over the piano. And, and, the, and the next thing, he was playing away on the mouth organ. And Grode was there looking around, <laughs> wondering where all this my waddy all over the piano came from. And he didn't even realise he'd done it now, but Grode reminded me of that on the way up there. But he was that determined to play that tune. It, he didn't care who was in the way. He was, once the mouth organ was in the mouth, that was it. <laughs> <coughs> So, so, we're actually going to play that tune now, keep them happy, and there are a set of slides there, and believe it or not, they're not too common around Cavan there, but we'll chance them anyway, so we'll give them a go. Thank you very much, hope you enjoy them. He'll soon be as good as Maguire delays. <laughs> <laughs>
be a drop of Kerry in him. <laughs> yeah. So, I suppose next on to the stage we'll get back. Do you want to hear another story from Eamon Maguire there? Yeah. We can't hear you. Do you want to hear another story? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to go and find him. Uh, sure, I'm looking for a woman, but I'm getting middling out. Me hair is going patchy, and me blood is getting cold. I put it off for ages, but I have it in me head. For they say there's nothing like a doll to warm up your bed. Ah, me mammy's past a hundred now. Ah, she can't keep going much more. And when she's dead, who will wash and cook and iron and sweep the floor? And feed the hens and milk the cow and make the soup from a bone? Or help me save the hay and turf? Now, sure, I should have can't do all me loan. Ah, there was girls galore when I was young. They'd blondes, brunettes and red. But me mammy said to take me time and stick with her instead. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be plenty of girls when I am gone. Short sure, girls are two a penny. And a man like you, with twelve acres of land, can have your pick of honey. Well, I walked out Maggie Carraher for 20 years or more. Then she says, I think it's time we wed. She was touching 44. <laughs> and when I said I'd talk to Mammy first and see if she would mind, she said, Maggie, kick me where it hurts the most <laughs> and then up the behind. <laughs> and when I told her Mammy said the way, she railed on me for sure. Saying, go and sleep with mammy, ya mangy hungry who? <laughs> <laughs> may her snots hang down like rushers, and may her rushers taste like snot. And may ye end your days trying to please her, and empty her chamber pots. <laughs> well, this was life after mammy now. Well, I courted the widow Sweeney. She was thin and hard and mean. And when I heard she buried three men, Sure, I was no longer game. <laughs> I tell her I was sickly, not fit for endurance. And she says, Ah, sure, what about it? Should I collect your life assurance? <laughs> well, I went for Mary Bullock. She had cattle by the score. But her face was brown and, and, and wrinkled, like a wood where I'm a ravaged door. <laughs> with a nose you could chop sticks with, and ties as thick as kegs. And flannel knickers to her knees to hide her big red legs. <laughs> ah, last I thought I'd try the matchmaker. And she said, he told me, <laughs> I thought I'd try the matchmaker, and he said he'd get me a flyer. I thought he meant an air hostess, not a sex kitten on fire. <laughs> I asked her, could she cook? And she says, I'm just good in bed. And she really said I'd try a blanket from the electric shop instead. <laughs> so here I am at 70, and it's time I made a move. I have a decent house and a dresser, a table and a stove. I have neither top nor toilet, I just squat between the rocks. And if the grass is a kind of scarce, I should have loads of big green ducks. <laughs> I want a girl that's natural, not a bloody painted doll. With black lead on her eyelashes and boobs like a football. <laughs> I don't approve of waxing, so I don't mind hairy shanks. But a beard under a rock like a billy goat. No thanks. <laughs> I'm looking for a woman that's young and strong and healthy. Not one with airs and graces. But I don't mind if she's wealthy. A midland decent figure with a clean and well scrubbed face. And with God's help and Viagra, shall we liven up this place? <laughs> I, I warned you about him. <laughs> um, next, we're going to have another guest up to the stage there. There's a man here, and I know him for years there, and he... There was a festival last year in Lewisburg and I went over to it and I met this man and he has no mobile phone so I couldn't contact him before but I just met him there by chance and we were glued to the hip the whole weekend there.
But we often met him here in Drumcairn at sessions and flas and everything. And number one, he has a great style of fiddle playing, and you wouldn't hear a livelier style there. And, and the second thing is this man, he's always smiling and have the crack. And we have a few guests to come on, but this will be the first one. Would you give a big round of applause to Paddy McMenamum from Donegal? <laughs> You know, Sorry for holding up the show. <laughs> <laughs> Before I start, I would go, I would join the concert down there very much. Oh, such great music and never had like, but I knew what I came up to that's part of the country for. And congratulations. Thanks, Paddy. <laughs> Good luck. And, and Paddy, you would you like to sing Loch Sheelan Side? Or would you want to do a set of tunes? The boys will back you there if you want to give us one verse to Loch Sheelan Side. <laughs> Whatever you want, Paddy. Whatever you want yourself. Play the tune. We play a tune first, he says. So. A good singer down there, sure that says me. We we'll give you a set of jigs there. The first one's the lark in the morning. And we we'll go into ships in full sail. And the last one's Dan Collins is real there. We'll give them a go, so DG and D there. <laughs>
Do you want to hear a set of reels out of Paddy? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do the sound of Paddy? Something happened. Will we encourage him to do one verse of the song? You and Paddy, you'll chance one verse. Two, two. <laughs> We're going to do a set of tunes here. Go on, Paddy. Set of reels. set together and we, me and Paddy we were on the stage last year in Sligo together do you remember that Paddy and like that I think the tunes were only picked five minutes beforehand but we're picking them here on the stage now anyway but I'm in a good position Paddy knows a fair amount of tunes now <laughs> did you ever hear that one Paddy Lucy Campbell yes <laughs> we'll be giving it a go will we I'll follow you <laughs> We do a set there, Lucy Campbell, into Come West Along the Road, and we'll finish with. Um we'll finish with. Shall we see what we go in town? Sure. <laughs> DG. And Don't supr be surprised if I go out the back door. <laughs> We'll go into the Tullerila, seeing as Amy and Grode is here. <laughs> 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 
Will you give that one a go? Oh. <laughs>
a big round of applause. Well done, Paddy. There's a very shy young lady up here on the stage, and she doesn't want to play a tune on her own, but I think she should. What do you think? Yeah. She's from Clare, she has to be good. Go on, Amy. I was under enough pressure all night. <laughs> 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 That's great stuff now. Great, great stuff now. Now, there's another man I'm going to invite to the stage. And believe it or not, another fiddle player again now. We're blessed with great fiddle players around the place. This man now, the more than Paddy McMenamum, he's a great friend for years there. And any sessions there, he's in the middle of them. And he taught a lot of youngsters now who became great players. And um, Jesus, he's been a, a great friend of mine over the years, and Paddy as well there. Would you welcome to the stage, Dinny Leonard. <laughs> yep. This man here, he's, he's been a great friend for years, and he's been a regular attendant at the John McKenna Festival. All the locals know him. And it's a pleasure to be on the stage with Dinny Leonard. So thanks for playing a tune, Dinny. Ferguson has become a great hand at these CD launches, isn't he? <laughs> such a night as he put on tonight. Uh, wonderful to see it be such a success from seeing the great, the great uh, cause that it's for. Me and Dinny, we've been playing for sessions for years there. And we have these sets of tunes there that <laughs> we kind of a connection when we hit. Oh, lovely. It's like, I'm thinking in my head, 
Jeez, I must play Tim Maloney's. And I think the same, <laughs> exact same thing goes through Dinny's head there. Wonderful. The last night I played as Fergal, he made me play on somebody else's fiddle, and I wasn't too comfortable in that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to get playing on my own fiddle, at least. It's hard enough on it sometimes. Well, we'll try three tunes. The first one's George White's favourite. Sean Gilrain gave a fair introduction for that tune. Yeah, that's and, great. And the Sailor's Bonnet will go into next there. And we'll finish off then with a tune called Tim Maloney's there. Lovely. So we'll give it a go. And
Wonderful, wonderful man, Fergal. Uh, went up to the floor in Calvin on Sunday night. He invited me up to play with him at a session. And I was a bit early, and I went into the pub we were going to play in. And there was about 20 children playing in a ring, and Fergal hadn't arrived. So I wonder what happens when Fergal comes. But when Fergus come, typical Fergus, he just stepped into the middle of them, and off he went with a big smile on his face. <laughs> Oh, he's such a man, it's not a wonder that we find him putting it's such an effort into supporting this great thing that is going on out in Africa. That's just Fergus. Oh, and among the youngsters, having a crack with him, he never slates anybody. If you can play a tune, you're, you're okay with Fergus. <laughs> Fergus, well done, <laughs> Fergus, boy. Thanks, did he? Oh, Maybe we, we're coming towards the end of the night there. Um, we, we're going to finish off with a set of reels, but maybe before I do that, we have a couple of waltzes on the CD. And I hear Teresa Devitt's a great lady for waltzing there. So, <laughs> so if, if there's any man out there who wants to waltz, maybe there's lots of room up here anyway. But I might try these waltzes. Sean, Sean gave the introduction. The first one's the beautiful goldfinch. Composed by Marcus Hernan. Do you remember the man who reckoned he was away with the boards? <laughs> Composed good tunes, though. But, but um, I'm going to go into a waltz then, Sunday as well. And that was composed by Catching the Gown, um, who, of course, is a daughter of Anton McGowan's, who comes from beside home in Mullahorn there. So I'll give these two waltzes a go there. <laughs>
we'll, we'll finish off with a set of reels there. We'll, um, one tune that Sean Gilrain brought up there, and we didn't do it yet, was the new found out. You remember the story to that one? <laughs> we'll try the new found out. And what will we go into? We'll go into... We'll go into the Duke of Leinster after it. <laughs> Maybe everyone with an instrument come up onto the stage and we'll finish off with this set now. Come on up, Dinny and Paddy and everyone with an instrument there. Daddy and Paddy. Yeah. <laughs> Seamus Bogan, whoever has an instrument, <laughs> and there's one very important man who has to come up here and give a tune, and that's Sean Gilrain. Come on, Sean. <laughs> oh, Shani. <laughs> oh, Shani. <laughs> the down Shani. Now, of all the people I ever met. Of all the people I ever met, I never seen a man with as much knowledge about music than this man here. In all fairness, he just lives for it. Now we're well set up. The Kelly Band now. Like a like a Kelly Band, a Kelly Band. Anyway, we're going to try a couple of tunes there. Ones that I play along with Dinny regularly. First one is Devani's Goat. And as, as Dinny says, don't, don't be afraid of the goat, he does say now. But we go into Devani's goat in the Duke of Leinster. And we'll, um, we might go into the Silver Spear. And sure, we'll see where we go after that. We'll, we'll keep it going, as the keep man says. Are you ready, Sean? Yeah. <laughs>
Before I go, I'd just like to thank the organising committee for inviting us here today. And we have great friends in Drumcairn. And I'd like to thank all my friends on the stage here for playing along. And the McNamara's came from Clare and Jerry came from Fermanagh. And Dinny came from Fermanagh and Paddy from Donegal. And most importantly, I'd like to thank you all for coming here tonight. Good and on. thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed it. And it's, you've been a great audience. And thank you very much. And safe home. And we'll see you at the festivals over the summer. Thank you. Woo!